Hi guys, Claudia Boleyn here and today's video is about Jeremy Corbyn. It's a political video um, about UK British politics so you might want to skip this video if you don't know what's going on right now in the UK because it's turned into a bit of a mess but I'm not going to explain it all in this video. If you are up to date with what's happening in the UK and within the Labour Party then <laughs> I'm really shocked and disappointed and I <laughs> genuinely feel very upset and I know that's really silly but I, I feel genuinely <laughs> really hurt and I know you'll pro I'll probably get accused of bringing too much emotion into this but I, I feel like someone is getting bullied and I just I really hate that I have to say I hate bullying in politics I hate any sort of personal attack in politics I believe very firmly that politics should be about wanting to do good and the good of the people and trying to do your best in that way. I don't believe it should be about personally attacking people or game plans or anything like that. I think it should be very simple and unfortunately um, the political world that we live in right now it's kind of it's like a 21st century equivalent of Game of Thrones because there's so many agendas going around and I genuinely don't believe in the sincerity of a great many politicians. That doesn't mean that I have a huge amount of ill will towards them because I feel like this horrible atmosphere in which MPs are fair game kind of led up to... I, I personally think they led up to the, the horrible murder of Joe Cox because there is this horrible... I think people in this country are, are not satisfied with the government and politics and I agree with that. I feel like I don't like the way it runs, I don't like the system we're in right now and we feel kind of powerless but that has led to this horrible sort of aggression towards politicians and that's something I hate. I just think politicians are people. I mean, even people like Nigel Farage, who I despise what he stands for, I would not want any harm to come to him. You know, like, you hear about people outside his house or outside his office, you know, like mobs and that kind of thing. I don't think that's right. I don't think intimidation is ever the way to go. Anyway, the Jeremy Corbyn situation. I used... To, I'm not a Labour voter, actually, so some people will say this is not... <laughs> My opinion isn't relevant, and that's that's your right. I, I This is an opinion video, and I'm aware that my opinion probably doesn't hold that much weight, but I'm a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, I can say that, and I used to be a Labour voter. I have been a supporter of Labour since I was about 13 or 14. Um, my family are not all Labour voters. I, I have a, a quite a mix of different voters in my family, but my immediate family um, are Labour supporters, and so I sort of grew up kind of with the left wing kind of politics kind of thing. I did go through a rebellious stage um, <laughs> where I once told my mum during an argument that I was going to go up and vote Tory and like it worked, like she was quite shocked. But I, I, I've, I've educated myself quite a lot on the different political parties. I know I have grown up in a left family but I really have made an effort to educate myself on that kind of thing. I've had lots of friends of different like political parties and but I, I am a lefty sort of person but my problem with the Labour Party was that I became very dissatisfied with how central it was becoming and how it felt so similar to to all the rest of the parties and I I, I guess I in a way us very left Labour people who ex-Labour people who've gone to the Greens maybe or, or who feel very frustrated do have that in common with a lot of the UKIP supporters on the right and I think that it's because we feel very dissatisfied with the situation as it is and the government as it is and the setup and I think we just feel very powerless and it's made people go in those two different directions. So in a way I can understand this sort of surge towards UKIP and that kind of thing which I find frightening but I can also see why it's happening because this the system as it is is it's an absolute mess. Anyway back to the topic at hand. Jeremy Corbyn is obviously the um, the leader of the shadow whatever you call it. He's the leader of the Labour Party and they're the opposition. And he has not had support since the very start. He's quite left and there's been this sense that since he was elected, I should say he was elected by members of the Labour Party, so people who are part of the Labour Party were able to vote for their, who they wanted as their leader and fair and square in a democratic vote Jeremy Corbyn won by quite a long way. Which I would think, <laughs> you know, like if you're a democratic party you'd think, okay, that's what the people want, fair enough. Um, you've got to go with democracy. Just like with me personally looking at the Brexit thing, a lot of people want to have a second referendum and personally I'm against that. Even though I, I wish we would remain in the EU, I think that we have to stand by 
democracy and what the people vote for. So Jeremy was voted in by the people and he's got a lot of support from not even just the Labour Party because I, I'm a Green and I have to admit I left the Labour Party before Jeremy Corbyn was elected and I felt this great surge of hope when he was elected because I personally feel like Jeremy Corbyn is a very genuine politician. I feel like he's not after power, he's not after that sort of influence. I feel like he genuinely wants to make the world a better place. He said himself he cannot stand personal attacks in politics. I think he's genuinely a very decent man. and. As much as I don't want to put down politicians because I know they they work very hard, I don't think that sort of level of selfless decency is particularly common in a lot of politicians. Um, again, that's not me saying that politicians are bad people, but I just think that there is a level of genuineness <laughs> to Jeremy Corbyn which is not particularly common and which I also find in the Green Party, which is why I went to the Greens. However, Jeremy Corbyn is someone who actually does have the potential, or did have the potential, depending on when I put this video up, I hope he stayed, to drag me back to Labour. For me, Jeremy Corbyn really stands for the people, and he's left. He's left wing. So much of Labour has become so central and so similar to the Tories, and I don't really think that's what you want. What, not what I personally want in an opposition, you know. I want a left wing party, a strong left wing party, to battle the strong right wing party. And that it's all so central that it all just feels like a mess, like this big soup of of people with these fake smiles and they're being charismatic but they don't answer questions properly and they're wearing their suits but nothing they say seems sincere and it's all so staged. And I find Jeremy Corbyn a breath of fresh air because he's been criticised for not wearing suits and that kind of thing, for looking scruffy, and I just think, isn't it about the politics? Isn't it about the decency and what he stands for and what he can do? So that bothers me a lot. And again, I can empathise actually with those people on the right who've gone to UKIP because although I don't like Nigel Farage and he's a very different politician to Jeremy Corbyn, I think they're very opposite in a lot of ways. He also represents someone who isn't like that sort of pre-packaged... I, I think about it like, you know X Factor winners have become this very generic, like... <laughs> Like, they're all the same, like, they've sort of, they get destroyed by the X Factor thing and they give out generic music and then they disappear after a while and they don't make much of an impact. I kind of think of it like that. So it's like we keep, we keep getting these, these prime ministers and these politicians that all come from the same school and they all get, maybe they start out individual and then they get moulded into this. Anyway, but because we lost the vote for EU referendum, I, I say we lost, I don't think this is a political party versus political party thing. The whole should we stay in the European Union or should we leave, I did not see, and I don't think a lot of people saw, as something that was party versus party. I didn't vote based on I'm a Green, I didn't think, oh, <laughs> what did the Green Party tell me to vote? I took it as a personal decision, I think a lot of people did. Obviously I looked at what the Greens thought, and I looked at what a lot of Labour people, I looked at what people from all the different parties thought, but it was a personal decision. I wasn't thinking, oh, I've got to go with what the Greens say, because they're my party. I don't agree with that sort of politics anyway. I must just say that I think it's absolutely ludicrous that people are acting like the reason they want Jeremy Corbyn to go is because we lost <laughs> the fight to stay in the European Union. Like, to start with, the majority of people who voted Remain, like, the majority of Labour supporters did vote Remain anyway, so surely he did his job. The other point that I just brought up is that I don't think people voted based on what party they're part of. And I think... I'm, I'm gonna be honest here, and I, I've seen this for a while, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the Labour Party, a large group of them, have wanted Jeremy Corbyn gone for a while. Like, ever since he was elected, they've been afraid of him. They think that he's too radical, and I think they're afraid of how actually genuine he is, and that he's not into that sort of power thing, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna step up here, I'm gonna make a little deal here, and I'm gonna get up, and I don't think he's part of that, and I think that threatens them because he's something they're not used to, and I think it's been very clear for a long time they've wanted him out, and I think they've chosen this time, this dangerous, selfish time, to suddenly think, oh, the Prime Minister's gone, like, let's try and get rid of Jeremy too. And you know what, I could understand all of this happening, all these Labour people turning on Jeremy Corbyn if he'd done something wrong. Um, I can understand that. Like, I don't think David Cameron should have left, our Prime Minister, because I don't blame him for what happened with the EU thing. I think he gave us a vote. I think he was in a difficult situation because there was UKIP in the last general election saying, we're going to give people a vote on the EU. People clearly wanted that vote. And I think that David Cameron did what he had to do. And I don't think you can blame someone for 
giving the people the choice and a lot of people have said it's a bad idea but I think he was in a difficult situation so anyway he gave the people the choice the people voted out I don't think that's David Cameron's I don't think that's on him anyway he's gone and I don't think he should have had to go and now people are saying that Jeremy Corbyn should go because we've lost and it's so for me it's so transparent maybe I am missing the point but I just see this as an opportunity I think people in the Labour Party who we know have not supported Jeremy Corbyn from the start, even though he was democratically elected, so what's up with that, um, have suddenly thought, oh, let's pounce right now, let's take this opportunity and try and get rid of him. And I can see so many of them, they say they're doing it for the people because they want a strong opposition, but I find it very hard to believe that they are doing this for the people, considering it's the members of the Labour Party that voted Jeremy Corbyn in as leader. Obviously he's very popular with members of the Labour Party. I know he's very popular with people, a lot of ordinary people who aren't members of the Labour Party. And so it does feel very odd. And I, I don't have a problem with these politicians in Labour saying I'm not comfortable with Jeremy being leader and some of them is, have resigned. And I can't blame them for that because if they really don't believe what he believes in and they, they don't want to be part of that, you know, you, you shouldn't have to stick around. But this bullying campaign that's going on right now to try and get Jeremy Corbyn to leave and trying to say, oh, it's in the interest of the people and you're putting everyone in danger by staying in control. And he's even been called a narcissist for remaining as the um, leader of the opposition. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's bullying. And I think it's so transparent. And I am personally glad that Jeremy Corbyn has not given into it yet. And I worry because there's so much pressure on him. Today, I was watching the PMQ's live, that's the Prime Minister's questions, and the Prime Minister, or ex-Prime Minister, or <laughs> soon to be ex-Prime Minister, David Cameron, told him, like, for heaven's sake, like, leave. He told Jeremy Corbyn to leave and he got quite heated about it. I will forgive David Cameron that because he has had a bad week. <laughs> He's had a very bad week. But I just think that this, this absolute, like, it's, it does seem like bullying to me. I don't think it's fair. I think they're making it into this sort of, you have to leave Jeremy, you're... Every little thing he does is being picked apart. Like, for example, he had, um, he had a meeting of the Shadow Cabinet the other day, and on camera he was seen saying to one of his aides, you know what, I'm not sure this is a good idea, can we film later? To me, like, that doesn't seem like this hugely awful slip-up. <laughs> okay, maybe it's, it's, it's not hope like this the best professional thing possible but it doesn't seem like a huge slip up on why someone should leave a party everything he does has been picked apart now and i just think it's totally wrong he has the support of his party he's been democratically elected and people saying that he's a narcissist for staying i don't know what they expect him to do if he were to leave based on the people the high up mps in his party who don't like him I don't know if that would be the right thing to do and I think he's in a very difficult situation because obviously he wants to do what's best. But if you're voted in by the people, who do you listen to? I would say as a politician, you listen to the people. You don't listen to the establishment. I mean, it's the people, the people who vote for Jeremy Corbyn and the people who love him so much love him because he is a different sort of politician, because he is genuine, he doesn't play that game. He really does seem like he has aims and he's very fair and he's, he's very kind and has so much empathy. That's what they like about him. I think it would be betraying his very nature as a politician if he left because other MPs didn't want him in power. Because for me, and I think for Jeremy Corbyn, it's not about what the MPs want. It's not about the establishment. It's about the people and what the people want. Now, he has said there can be another election and he will stand in that. Surely that's all he can do. I don't understand why people think that it's selfish of him to remain as leader. He has said, OK, we will have another vote. We will see what the people want. And if they vote for someone else, then I'm sure Jeremy Corbyn will stand down. And I think that's fair because it's what the people want. But the, it just strikes me as so selfish, so everything that's wrong with politics right now, that because the MPs have turned against Jeremy Corbyn, they are now acting like he's selfish for not leaving. It's about the people. It's not about the MPs. It's about what the people want. The people have voted for Jeremy Corbyn. I do think it's a leadership grab. I think a lot of people on the left, on the in the Labour Party, have thought to themselves, oh, here's an opportunity for me. Like, oh, it looks like someone's, <laughs> someone's in a bit of trouble. I'm gonna... I'm going to make that a little bit worse and I'm going to try and climb up the ladder a little bit. It's, it really is very Game of Thrones right now. And the most frustrating thing is that while they're having this sort of civil war in the Labour Party, which is so unnecessary because Jeremy Corbyn has said, OK, we can have, like, we'll have another vote, 
Like, that would solve all the problems. I don't know why there's this huge civil war. It's just making politics look awful. Everyone is now concerned because while the Tories are having a civil war, Labour is also having a civil war. Um, it looks like the only real party that seems to have any power and is doing anything right right now. I love the Greens, but they're not very prominent in politics right now. But the SNP, Nicola Sturgeon, is doing a great job. I must say, she. I watched her doing a speech the other day and I thought, wow, what a woman. You know, very good at what she does. But while this is all happening, do you know what's happening? Like, Nigel Farage, people like Nigel Farage are growing in power while all this is happening because it makes politics look like a mess. It does look like a mess. People are going to turn to other things. A lot of these Labour MPs that want Jeremy Corbyn to go are saying if he can't command his own MPs, then surely he can't you know, run a country, you know, but the thing is, the reason he can't control his own MPs is because they've chosen to attack him, they've chosen to go against democracy, what the people wanted for his party, and I see it as a very selfish power grab, I'm, I know that's my opinion and some people will disagree, and I do know that the leader of the opposition should be strong and should be able to, you know, have control of the people around them. But I, I really don't see that this is fair. I don't see that he's done anything wrong. I think they see him as a threat. If this had come about just after the EU thing had happened, I'd believe the motives more, but it's been going on for way longer. It's been going on a lot before that. So I just can't believe it. I feel like they've wanted him out for a long time and they've taken their opportunity. They've taken the worst possible time to do this for everyone in the country. It's incredibly selfish. I'm seeing people who voted Labour disappearing from Labour and going either to the Greens, which for me is good, but and also going to UKIP, which in my opinion I'm thinking, oh dear god, like this is dangerous, this is genuinely dangerous. A lot of people are saying that Jeremy Corbyn can't command because of his sort of persona, and I, I know his persona is not what you'd expect in a sort of Prime Minister or something, and I think that's okay. I'm a very strong believer that politics is not about the image, it's not about that sort of Tony Blair insincere grin and the suits and all that sort of pre-written stuff and the fact that they don't answer questions properly and like I get so frustrated by that in politics when they ask a politician a question which is it should be easy to answer and then they I don't know how like <laughs> There must be courses in bullshittery for politicians because they, they manage to go all over the place like a maze with their words and they never actually get to the point and somehow it moves on and nobody knows. It was just a very simple question and nobody knows what they think about it and I just really hate that. I feel like Jeremy Corbyn stands for something different and people say he looks shabby and yeah, he does look a bit like a teacher. But the thing is, his politics are sound. I think that he does have charisma. I think he has a quiet charisma. I think when I saw him in PMQs this morning, I thought that he spoke well. I thought that he he's a very intelligent man. He puts together an argument very well. I honestly just... I think people are afraid of him because he challenges politics as we know it. And it's the same, it's very similar, I guess the appeal of Jeremy Corbyn, in a way, I know I've said this before, but it's, he's, it's a similar appeal to Nigel Farage, but also it's the, entire, it's the entirely opposite appeal. I feel like his way of doing politics, they're, they're like these two new radical ways of doing politics that have emerged because of the mess that is British politics right now. Um, people want something different and relatable, so Nigel Farage has gone for the charismatic guy at the pub kind of thing. <laughs> you know? And I feel like um, Jeremy Corbyn has gone for, like, honesty, and I think he speaks his mind, and he takes his time to think about something, and you know you're going to get a genuine answer from him, and I know I sound very biased, and I am biased, because I'm a Jeremy Corbyn fan, but I trust that man. I trust that man with power. I don't think he's about any scheme to get higher up. I, I really do think he's about the people. So I'm very upset because I feel like he is being bullied, um... <laughs> I just think it's ridiculous. I feel like I, I understand if there are people out there who, in the Labour Party, who feel like they're not fans of him, okay. So the solution is you have a vote in the Labour Party and you see who they want as leader. It shouldn't be this bullying and this pressure. And I worry because he's a decent, genuine man going through this awful campaign and the stress it's going to put on a person. It's not fair. It really is bullying and I hate that about politics. I cannot stand the bullying that goes on in British politics at all. I don't think it's fair on any politician, and it especially hurts me because this is a man that has said himself, he doesn't do personal attacks, and he never has, I've, I've never seen him do that, so it's just, it's upsetting to me, and I just want to say I support Jeremy Corbyn, and I know I'm a Green, but he is one of the only leaders of the Labour Party that I truly believe in, I truly believe in him, I think he's a decent man, and it upsets me so much, so I hope this mess gets sorted out, for the good of everyone in this country, to be honest.
the bullying just upsets me so much it's so unnecessary anyway i love you loads um please tell me what you think in the comments section i'm totally open to hearing your opinions please let's just not be nasty to each other obviously i've had my say so you have the right to have yours but let's not be throwing insults around because i'm i'm like i said i'm a big believer in in you know politics is politics but we don't need to be attacking each other so yeah oh god it's a mess <laughs> i feel really genuinely upset for him i feel sad and i just think the, the, the pressure he's under is immense and it's not deserved i mean this didn't happen like you think about all the things that have happened before people that have been when tony blair started an illegal war <laughs> there wasn't this amount of like ugh, resignations and all that kind of thing oh well i love you loads and i'll see you really soon and i hope that by the time i put this up jeremy corbyn is still leader of the opposition um i worry they're gonna force him out but i i'm hoping and sending him vibes and saying be strong mate um you can do this <laughs> okay i love you loads i'll see you really soon bye